Okay. Here's problem one. I'm going to do that. So let me try this. Change nothing, huh? Still change nothing. If it's not one thing, it's another. Let's try this. Still nothing. Let's try this again. Still nothing. Okay, everything's hunky dory on this one, so this time I will turn it off. may not have done is let it stay off long enough for the fan to go through its cycle. Okay, who had the little doll that you put needles through? I mean, <laughs> all right, make us a little computer you put needles into. The electronics is taking a day off at this point. Okay, something is trying to come on. There. You hit the button again, right? Hit the middle button. Right in the middle. Just right in the middle? No signal. This is crazy. Unless this is a bad cord, which I think it's the same one I always use. Still nothing. Where's your... Don't you hit one that get, takes you to input? Okay, that's looking good. Input one, no signal. Did that change anything? So here we go. We were just starting capillary action last time, and we were talk, talked about that to a fair extent. Um, and several of the slides are not in here. Um, on the slide set, several of the figures from the text are not on the slide set. Uh, so let me, I think we had just finished viscosity. And I had begun talking about capillaries. So, um, and
an interesting feature of fluid balance, you might say, if you have four different tubes, as long as they're big enough, not capillary tubes, water will seek the same level in all of them. No matter what, this, this is much more volume here, this is more volume than the other two, this is crooked, that's straight, the water goes to the same level. However, uh, if you have a very thin tube, a capillary tube, uh, because of the surface tension and adhesion, the thinner the tube, the higher the column of water it will pull up. And I talked about it last time, but here's a figure that illustrates it. That's the figure uh, 1224 in your text. And this then is the one 1225 that uh, is on the slide set. And this is showing some of the differences we were talking about. Um, water with three size tubes here. Uh, the larger tube pulls it up a little ways. The smaller capillary, even further, the very tiny capillary will pull it quite far. Okay? And then taking this over to look at this and not too easy to tell, but water forms a meniscus that climbs up the tube, okay, and the smaller the tube, the more it climbs up, whereas mercury usually does not like to interact with anything. Water adheres to the glass and tries to pull it up. Mercury doesn't want to adhere to the glass. It is bonded much more. Its cohesion is much stronger than its adhesion, so they're trying to hang on to each other and not touch the glass at all. But of course, they have to at some places. So mercury will form a upward meniscus, and the smaller the capillary tube, then the more it moves downward. It's only the uh, adhesion that pulls it up; the cohesion pushes it down. Okay. Now, the next slide jumps many pages. Okay. Um, and there is a physics connection on page 328, oil viscosity. We talked about that briefly last time. And then there is a uh, section 12.4 on properties of gases. Four very short paragraphs which take up about a quarter of a page. And that's all she wrote. But let me just mention a few of the things here. Um, solids shrink, shrink and swell when they cool in heat, right? But it's very, very small amount. Liquids, a little bit more, but still very, very little. Gases, big time, okay? They really <clears throat> do expand. So expansion is a property of a gas which is a rapid Random movement of the molecules causes the gas to com completely occupy the volume of its container, but then if you add energy to it, um, if you had a closed container, it's going to tend to blow up, like air in a basketball, okay, um, or football. Now, another one. Now, this is true for other phases of matter as well, but mostly for gases. Diffusion. The process by which the molecules of a gas mix with other surrounding molecules. Remember my example of the bottle of ammonia in the corner. That is also, it was gas occupying the whole volume, but it also represents diffusion. Diffusion are, is when materials from a high concentration move into an area where it has a low concentration. Now, the dumb example I do of this, I don't know if any of you are gardeners at all, uh, but I thought uh, when you have a garden or a flower bed or something like that, that Bermuda grass diffuses from the yard and moves from the high concentration to the low concentration, which is your flower bed or your garden, and that Bermuda grass is heading that way, you know, as fast as it possibly can. That is a dumb example of diffusion. It's the process by which molecules of a gas or any substance 
uh, mixed with molecules of another, and they go, always go from high concentration to low concentration. Okay, one last thing they say about it. You may have heard the term fluid dynamics. What do they mean by that? When you hear fluid, what do you think? Just what word comes to mind when you hear fluid? Second, liquid. Actually, a fluid is either a gas or a liquid. Anything that takes the shape of its container is a fluid. So uh, when you hear that, most of the same properties that go for gases or liquids go for gases as well. The only thing is gases take up the whole container. All right, then we move to density. And that's what table 12.2 is referring to, and it's on the following page, but let's just hit a couple of, uh, what would you call it, kind of like definitions or distinctions, okay? Density is a property for all three states of matter, or phases of matter. Solids have density, liquids have densities, gases have densities, okay? For solids and liquids, they can pretty much define what material you're talking about, okay? Gases, if it's a pure gas, yes, it will as well. But gases diffuse so easily, it's hard to keep them absolutely pure, okay? There's two types of density we deal with. The first is called mass density, and this book uses a symbol for that, to be d sub m, okay? And as that might suggest to you, density is mass per unit volume, or at least mass density is. The other is weight density, and that would be the weight per unit volume, right? Now, capital V, remember, volume. Little v stands for as the parameter for velocity, okay? So don't get those confused. Um, and in order so that you, to be a little more consistent with the rest of it, they usually called weight, if you'll remember from earlier chapters, the force due to weight, okay? Now, I'm used to saying force due to gravity, and that would be your weight. This book uses force F sub W, okay? Now, what would be the typical units for mass density? Any idea? SI units? What's the SI unit for mass? Kilogram. Volume? A volume. The volume of this room would be length times width times height. Each of those is measured. SI unit would be meters. That would be meter cubed. Whereas the weight density... If you were SI, it would be Newton per meter cubed, but most of the time we don't use it in SI units. The only time, or generally the time that we use weight density is in the U.S. customary units, because, and then it would be pounds per cubic foot. I say cubic feet, that's usually the standard, and I think that would, goodness gracious, I just forced the, eyelash into my eye. It just drilled in there. Okay, I think it came up. Woo! All right. Pounds per cubic foot, okay, would be a typical. Um, let me give you a few of these things out. Any idea why we don't use mass density for U.S. customary system? think I told you before. See, I'm teaching a physical science class on the other campus Tuesday, Thursdays. Can't remember which one I've said to them and which one I've said to you. But mass in the U.S. customary system is hardly ever used. There is a unit for it, but no one ever uses it. They don't even have an abbreviation for it. Does anyone remember what it was? Sounds like a little slimy thing that gets into your garden. 
Slug. And who wants to talk about slugs per cubic feet? Ooh, yeah, that doesn't even sound good, you know. So they use weight density, pounds per cubic feet. And then the SI system generally is mass density, kilograms per cubic meter. Okay? So let me just give you a few of these. Well, here they are. Wait, yeah, I won't have to do a thing. They're right here. Um, can y'all see it okay? It's awfully small print. But here are some of the solids. All materials, solids, liquids, and gases have densities. Okay? Now, aluminum, that's 2,700 kilograms per cubic meter. Man, that's a big number. In reality, that would be about 2.7 tons per cubic meter. Who wants to think in terms of things like that? So what we usually use, even though it's not SI, is grams per cubic centimeter, per cc cubic centimeter. And you just move the decimal three places over. 2.7, much more reasonable. But if you were dealing with weight density in the U.S. customary system, that's 169. Again, a big number, but not nearly as big as that. Brass, 8,700 8, or 8.7 uh, grams per cubic centimeter, 540 pounds per cubic feet. Concrete, now you have different densities of concrete, but that's sort of an average. Copper, but you see for these pure metals, like aluminum and copper and uh, ice, iron, lead, things that are pure, uh, these are fixed numbers, and if you had 2,700 grams per or kilogram per cubic meter, you know you've got aluminum. No question about it. Nothing else has that density. Okay. So any of these normal now concrete, like I said, that's a range, and that's sort of a characteristic number. But for copper and ice and iron and lead, those are pretty standard. Okay. But usually, what we use is 11.3 grams per cubic centimeter, 7.8 uh, grams per cubic centimeter, 0.1917, okay, grams per cubic centimeter, okay. Let's get down to the liquids, okay. Alcohol, 0.79 grams per cubic centimeter, or 790 kilograms per cubic meter. Um, gasoline, even lighter. Um, mercury, Look at that. Mercury is one of the few metals, I would say the only metal, that is a liquid at normal temperatures and pressure. Really bizarre. Look how dense it is, though. Why isn't that a solid? I don't know. Even lead is less dense than mercury, so if you had a pool of mercury and a lead ball that really heavy, drop it in there, the lead would float. Not high, but it would float. Okay? So lead is less dense than water. Iron is less, I mean, than mercury. Okay? Oil, less dense than gas, or more dense than gasoline, but still less dense than water. Seawater is just a little bit denser than uh, pure water. Okay? And by the way, pure water is exactly, or to the nearest three digits, uh, 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Okay, that comes from the fact that pure water at normal temperatures and pressure, they define a gram by the, they already had a meter, then a centimeter, a cubic centimeter, they said the amount of, the mass of water in one cubic centimeter was one gram, so that made it one gram per cubic centimeter, which is a thousand kilograms per cubic meter. Okay. And in the U.S. customary, that's 62.4 uh, pounds per cubic feet. So that's a fairly common one. Now, your gases, because gases expand and contract so easily, what they do, they say standard conditions. Zero degrees centigrade, which is pretty cold, or 32 degrees Fahrenheit, one atmosphere of pressure, which is 30... 30 or 32 inches of mercury, uh, uh, 760 millimeters of mercury. Uh, that's what uh, one atmosphere of pressure is. So air, on average, is 1.29. Uh, 
kilograms per cubic meter. Very, very light uh, in pounds per cubic foot. Very, very small. Ammonia, uh, less dense than air. Carbon dioxide, more dense than air. Now, uh, if you are in a burning building, okay, this is a tough thing to say, but if it was just, if you're getting hard to breathe, don't get near the floor because carbon dioxide is going to settle out compared to the rest of air. Oxygen will be higher up. Well, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's right. Okay. Uh, but if there's a lot of noxious gases being given off, for instance, uh, cyanide and some of those, they're lighter. Then you want to be near the floor because the lighter ones are typically going to be higher so you get down. Right, right near the floor you'll get more carbon dioxide. So you have to be very, very careful there. Look at this. Carbon monoxide and air are almost the same density. <laughs> no way to avoid it. If it's there, it's going to be mixed really well with the air. Helium, next to the lightest gas, Look how small its density is. The very lightest gas is hydrogen, really, really tiny. Nitrogen, 1.25, oxygen, 1.43. So you see carbon dioxide is denser than oxygen, uh, but they're fairly close. Um, propane, yeah, I'm surprised it's that dense, but it's a, a little, yeah, it's a big molecule, so you do that. So this is what the densities are. And generally, for pure substances, if you have know the density, you know the substance. If you know the substance, you know the density. It's mixtures like air and uh, concrete and uh, they say pine wood. <laughs> you know, hard to say what that density would be. Okay, they just give an average there. Can I get rid of this? I don't. I better not try. Okay, that's real interesting. They give you that table, and that's it for the, the PowerPoints. Okay, let me get back and see if I can find one that has more white space. That has about the most of any. Well, let's see. Let's try on this one. Let me erase my nope. ink, and we'll use this one. Let's do a few problems. Find the weight density of a block of wood, and they give you the dimensions, 3.00 inches, it better be, yeah, inches by 4.00 inches by 5.00 inches. Okay. There is the, are the dimensions of a rectangular block of wood and its weight. In fact, let me use the same thing. That's F sub W to be consistent with the book. F sub W is 0 0.700 pounds. What is its density? What's the definition for weight density? Sorry, I've got the yawns. It's the weight, F sub W, divided by the volume. And what's the volume? Did I say the volume of the room was? Length times width times height. Well, there, one of these is a length, one's a width, and one's a height. So multiply those three together, and what do you get? Sixty. Okay, and the the weight would be zero point seven zero zero pounds divided by sixty point zero um, cubic feet. No, that's cubic inches. 
All right, we have a problem, Houston. Our weight density is usually given in pounds per cubic feet. We've got cubic inches here. How do we convert cubic inches? 60.0 cubic inches. We need a conversion factor to get you cubic feet. Okay, notice I've had two blanks there. What are the blanks for? The first one for... Remember how we do our conversions? The numbers, the second one for the units. Okay, and which one do you worry about first? What do you put in its place first? The units. Put the units in this place. So which unit between cubic inches and cubic feet? Well, let's just get down to the basics. Inches and feet. One goes on top, one on the bottom. Which goes where? Inches on where? Bottom, okay. Inches on the bottom, feet on the top. Now, if you've noticed, I usually put a period after the IN for inches. Any idea why? If you had a sentence going there, and you had 30 inches, and you put IN and then had some other words, you might think that's IN the preposition, where you don't want it. So since it is an abbreviation, we put a period. It's the only abbreviation, pretty much, we put a period with. The feet, you're not going to think that stands for any word. It's, you know, that's it. You know, so, yeah, so we do it that way. Now, how do you com convert inches to feet? How many feet in an inch or inches in a foot? Which are always match the numbers with the units. Say again? 12 inches is one foot. But we don't have cubic inches, I mean inches and feet, we have cubic inches and cubic feet. So if we cube the units, we also have to cube the numbers. Now I can cube one, I'll take care of that one for you. That's one. But 12 cubed, that is a big number. Okay? So we need to convert that. So it's actually easier if you do 60 divided by, because this is just 1, 60 divided by 12 cubed. If your calculator will do that, see what you get. 128? Okay, uh, it sounds way too small. 60 divided by 12. Oh, I bet you I know what it's doing. What kind of calculator do you have? Uh, it's your phone. Phones, you have to be careful for. Okay, here's what you need to do. Do 12 times, okay. Here's the easiest way. 60, this sounds crazy, but it works. Divided by, or let me do your division sign, by 12 divided by 12 divided by 12. Then hit equal. That will give it to you. What you get when you do it that way. Pretty small number, right? What do you get? Zero point zero what? Two zero three five? Zero point zero three five with a, another zero or what? You need three significant digits. Is that right? Okay. Now what you do with that, now let's take this up here, 0 0.700 pounds divided by 0 0.035, is that what you told me? 0350 uh, square feet, I mean cubic feet, and that looks pretty good because if I move the decimal two places here and two places there, uh, 3.5 will go into 7 twice, so that would be 20.0 pounds per cubic foot. Okay? Now, that was a block of wood, right? Let's see how that compares to pine wood here on the table. 27 pounds per cubic feet. This one was 20. 
So this may be balsam wood, or it may be um, poplar, something that's a little less dense than white pine, okay? But it's right in the same ballpark. So I feel pretty good about that one. Let's see what they got. Oh, they got 20.2, so you must have rounded off a little bit differently, okay? But we'll let it go. That's close enough for government work. All right, any questions on that? Let's do a mass density of a ball bearing with a mass of 20.0 grams, 22.0 grams. So the mass of this ball bearing is 22.0 grams. Okay, a radius of 0 0.875 centimeters. 0 0.875 centimeters. Okay? Now, 22 grams is pretty light, but a radius, that would be about four-fifths of the way across your little fingernail. So that's a pretty small, I mean, a decent-sized ball bearing, but it's a pretty small piece of thing. So how are we going to calculate its density? Ball bearing. What shape is that? A what? What shape is a ball bearing? I can't hear you. Circle. Okay, if it were, its image on a plane would be a circle, but in three dimension, what's that called? A what? A what? A ball, yeah. A sphere? Sphere, okay, I just can't hear. Okay, so what is the volume of a sphere? Does anyone know? And I don't know if your book has these things in it or not. It seems like it would have to. So far, I haven't found it. There's formulas from physics, but I don't see any. Oh, wait, 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 yeah. Back inside cover of your book, there is a volume of a sphere. Anyone see what it is? Say again. Volume of a sphere. You got it? Anybody? Say again. Volume of a sphere. Your geometric solids on the bottom part of that page, the very last one is a sphere. Volume of that sphere. Say again. Okay. Are you saying pi over 6 d cubed? That's with the diameter of the sphere. No, I say four over three. Four over three, that's it. Four thirds pi r cubed. That's exactly right. Okay? So the volume is four thirds pi r cubed. Now your r is 0 0.875 cu uh, centimeter. Centimeter but then you're going to cube that, okay? Now, I don't know, a lot of the, most scientific calculators will have a pi key. All your graphing calculators have pi keys. I don't know if your telephone has a pi key. If it doesn't, use 3.14, okay? But your sphere, the volume of the sphere will be 4 divided by 3, times pi, times. Now, if you have a graphing calculator, I don't know if you can cube. If you can, do it. But if not, 0.785 times 0.785 times 0.785, okay? And that will give you cubic centimeters of a sphere of that radius. Take your mass, 22.0, divide it by whatever that volume would be. And that would give you your uh, mass density of that ball bearing. 
Anyone come up with what it is yet? I would guess it's somewhere close to iron. I don't know that for sure. That would just be my guess. Now, this is going to give you grams per cubic centimeter. Okay? I already indicated to you that all you do is add three, dec three zeros to it, or three move the decimal three places, and you get kilograms per cubic meter. Now, in case you're wondering how in the world that conversion comes into place, I'll show it to you. Let's start with um, one kilometer, kilogram, sorry about that, per one cubic meter. Okay, we're going to do the conversions here, two of them, maybe three, uh, two will do, to get us to blank grams per cubic centimeters. Okay? Now, there's two things you got to convert. One is kilogram, the other is gram. Uh, kilogram to gram, the other is meters to centimeters. Which one you want to do first? I don't care. That's why I put two blanks there. You tell me. Kilograms of gram. Okay, kilograms of gram. Okay, we'll use the first set of blanks for that. Once for numbers, once for units. Which one will we fill in first? Units. units. What goes where? Kilogram and gram. Above or below the line? The grams go to the Is what? The grams go below. No. Nope. Grams go on top. Kilograms below, so the kilograms will cancel out, and you're left with grams above the line, right? Okay. Now, how many grams in a kilogram or kilograms in a gram? 1,000 grams makes up one kilogram. Why did it do that? Oh, I know why it did. Okay, got it. This thing's driving me crazy today. The next one is centimeters and meters. Which one's going to go on top? Which one's on the bottom? Meters and centimeters. One's on above the line, one's below the line. Centimeters Which, on the bottom, meters on top. Meters on top, you said? Yeah, I'll buy that one. And centimeters on the bottom. Now, the question is how many meters in a centimeter or centimeters in a meter? 100 which? 100 centimeters makes one meter. But then we've got to cube them because you have cubic meters and cubic centimeters. So if you cube the units, you also cube the numbers. Okay? Now I can cube one. Got that one done. That's one. Okay? Now, 100 cubed would be 100 zero, 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 zero. That makes one million cubic centimeters for one cubic meter. Okay? And if you divide these out, the 1,000 here will wipe out three of those zeros, and that leaves you with a 1,000 left over. That's why moving the decimal three places left or right will give you a... Kilogram per cubic meter is one thousandths of a, in other words, a thousand grams per cubic centimeter is the same as one kilogram per cubic meter. Okay? So just move the decimal three places. So whatever we get here, did anyone ever do this? Four divided by three times pi or 3.14 times 0.875 cubed, or 0.875 times 0.875 times 0.875, what do you get as that volume of the sphere? Anyone do it? A little louder? 2.80? Or? 
Okay, start over. What's the first digit? 2.80. Okay, let's just leave it 2.80, and that would be cubic centimeters. Okay, so take your 22.0 grams, divide it by 2.80, or if you use the whole number if you got it on there. 22.0 divided by that number, and what do you get? Because this is mass per unit volume. That would be 22.8, no, 22.0 divided by 2.80. This is grams per cubic centimeter. Okay. And that looks like it's going to be something on the order of 90. No. Maybe less than 97, uh, 80 something. 22 divided by 2.8. 7. 7. Point what? 22 divided by 28. That sounded pretty good, though. 7.85, and that would be grams per cubic centimeter. Okay? So to make it kilograms per cubic meter, move the decimal three places, and you would have 7,850 kilograms per cubic meter. Okay? And what did I say that should be pretty close to? iron, which is 7,800. So the ball bearing probably is not pure iron. It probably has a little bit of chromium, maybe nickel, other things in it. Why wouldn't it be pure iron, you think? Iron rust like crazy. So you probably don't want your ball bearings to be pure iron. You want them to be an alloy which is going to be mostly iron, but you want something else. Stainless steel, maybe. That won't rust. Um, steel in general, not iron. Okay. And let's see what they got. 7,830. So they did a little bit different round off than we did. Okay. See how that works? Okay. Let's go to, can I erase it or are you still writing? All right, to erase? Okay. Example three. Find the weight density of a gallon of water weighing 8,000, uh, 8.34 pounds. So the weight, or they call it F sub W, is equal to 8.34 pounds. And we're looking for a weight density of a gallon of water. So the volume here is one gallon. Well, what in the world is a gallon? Well, let's see if there are any conversions anywhere in the book. Uh, not there. Um, let's see, volume, twenty-five or forty-five. Let's see if it's on either page there. That's not helpful. This book, I am liking it less and less. I mean, it's an okay book, but it sure doesn't have many tables for you. All 
I see nothing in the book that helps you with that conversion. So I'm just going to use what they have here. I don't know where they got it, but they got it here. One gallon is 231 cubic inches. Okay. And what we're looking for is the weight density, D sub W, and what is that formula? Force due to weight divided by the volume. Okay, and that's going to be 8.34, if I can read my writing, divided by 200, for some reason, okay, 231 cubic inches. Okay, that sure doesn't look, oh, oh, oh. That will give you in pounds per cubic inch. We still got to convert to get the cubic feet. So we'll do that in a minute. What does this give you? 0 0.03? 6 what? 6 1. Uh, out of the book? Okay, good. All right. And that's pounds per cubic inch and we want to multiply that by I'm sorry this is going to run into our table here and we're going to want it in blank pounds per cubic feet okay so what is our unit that we got to convert inches to feet and which will go where always put the units in their place Inches on top and feet on the bottom. Okay, that's a good place for your feet, isn't it? Okay. And how many inches in a foot or feet in an inch? Twelve which? Twelve inches, one foot. But then we've got to cube things. Cube the inch, cube the feet, cube the one, and cube the twelve. Okay, I can do the one. It's one. Okay. 12 cubed, that's 12 times 12 times, 12. okay. Since you got your number there, 0 0.0361 times 12 times 12 times 12, what would that give you? 0 0.0361 times 12 times 12 times 12. Or if you got a calculator, it'll do it times 12 cubed. I just don't know if your phones will do that. What do you get? 62.38. Second? 62.38. 62.38. And since we only have three significant digits, we will call that 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. And what do we find in our table? 62.4 pounds per cubic feet. That's it exactly. Very close. Okay? Yep. All right. They seem to like to do a lot of these, so let's do one more, at least. Find the weight density of a can of oil that's one quart weighing 1.90 pounds. The weight, which is F sub W, is equal to 1.90 pounds. Okay. And so I find the weight density of a can of oil that's one quart weighing that. Well, we found out before that a gallon was 231 cubic inches. A quart is exactly a quarter of a gallon. That's what the quart stands for. So divide four into this, and that looks like that would be zero point um, five seven. 
seven five. Is that what they get? I just lost it. Yeah, yeah. 57.8. Okay. All right, they're not doing it the same way I am, but it, it'll work out okay. Um, no, 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 that is what they did. Five seven. Where where did I get a decimal? What? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Four will go into two hundred thirty. The old gray cells are not working well today. Fifty seven point seven five cubic inches. I thought that looked like such a weird number. Yeah, that looks much better. Four will go into twenty three. Yeah, four will go into thirty. Yeah, that's it. So this will be your volume of this quart will be 57.75 cubic inches. Okay. And then we'll do the weight density to be 1.90 pounds divided by 57.75 cubic inches. What's that? I divided 4 into 231. They gave us that in the last problem, that a gallon was 231 cubic inches. I divided 4 into that and got it. Okay? Okay. Now, what we're going to do with that, though, remember we did it before. When you get this, you're going to multiply it by 12 times 12 times 12. Each one of those is inches per foot, so that would be the inches will go out and the feet, cubic feet will be left. So whatever that gives you, 1.90, and you can do them any order you want to, times 12, times 12, times 12, divided by 57.75. What do you get? A little louder. 56.80. 80. And that would be pounds per cubic foot. And let's see what oil was in our table. There is my table right there. Oil was 54.2. So this must be a higher density oil. Probably a little bit more viscous oil. What do they get? 56.9. They rounded a little bit differently. Oh, yeah. I know what they did. They rounded before I did, and that's why they got a bigger number. Okay. All right, let's move on to example five. Do we need to keep this up a little longer? So how are you supposed to round those feet when you have a tank or a hundred? What's that? How are you supposed to round those feet when you have a tank or a hundred? Okay. What they gave us in the problem was 1.90 pounds, so that's three significant digits there, and they also gave us a can of oil, which was a quart. Well, they didn't give us anything except in the previous problem, they gave us what was the uh, volume of a gallon, and they gave you three significant digits there. Now, what I did, since it went into exactly four times, rather than rounding early, I kept all four digits, Whereas in the book, they rounded and used 57.8. That's where they got a larger, or actually a smaller density than we did. No, larger. I can't account for that then. Um, and uh, see, the 12 is not, oh. We did, shouldn't have the extra zero there. 56.8, they got 56.9 pounds per cubic feet. Okay. And again, they did their pounds. Yeah. So again, I think they rounded early on the density too. So 
I say use whatever you got in there. But if you're within a, a decimal place or two. Now, I meant to say this because early on you said something about problem 10 on the test. Do you want to do something on that before we run out of time today? Yes. If we can work one that's similar to it, then I have problems with it. Okay. Did you find one similar to it? Can you work number 10? Oh, I should be able to, but that's not the question. The question is, can you work number 10? No, we can't. <laughs> okay. Yes. Now. I can find you one in the book. Okay. This is the one on a 55-gram bullet. Okay. And you can't get number A. Second, B or C. All of them, A, B, and C. You, you can get A. Fire a bullet straight upward. What's going to be its velocity when it reaches its highest point? Zero, Zero because it's going to start back down, okay? All right, so you got, I, I just gave you an answer, didn't I? All sucks. Okay. Now, what is the, what maximum height does it reach? Okay. Now, should the weight matter? Yes. Really? Oh, no. <laughs> or the mass matter? If you think about it, initial velocity upward, and all you've got pulling downward is the acceleration due to gravity. So whatever it is, if we're not taking into account air resistance, which I assume is going to be the case, then all you have is a um, problem from um, remember I think they call it Galileo's formula um, where your distance is equal to your initial displacement, which we're going to assume is zero. You're going to fire it from the ground, right? Zero position. So that's that. And then you have V naught T, you remember that? Plus one half. Why will my two, there, there it comes. G T squared. Okay. That's not helpful because you don't know the time. But don't lose that, okay? Um, okay. This was chapter 8, wasn't it? Okay. Let's go back to chapter 8. I don't want to give you the formula. I want you to find the formula. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, at the very end of chapter 8, page 228, there is a formula there, 8.4. What does it tell you? Exactly. Okay. So V is equal to the square root of 2GH. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, if what we're looking for is H, how high does it go? All it's doing is moving against uh, gravity. Okay. So the G's in there. So the V is your initial velocity and your H is your final height. Remember, that's where that formula came from, from your energy considerations. So let's square both sides. And that gives you 2GH is equal to V squared, right? Divide both sides by 2G. That should give you a height, don't you think? Okay, see, mass is not important in that, okay? Now... I'm not going to do the problem for you, but that should get you close. At what 
velocity does it hit the ground? Well, guess what? The velocity it loses going up is the same as the velocity it gains going down because the only acceleration is due to gravity and it's always constant. So what should it be? You said velocity it hits the ground. Right. Huh? Zero, right? No. Okay, no, no. Right before it hits the ground. Oh, boy. At what velocity uh, does it hit the ground? Not... Oh, okay. Yeah, right. It's not when it stopped, but, you know, what velocity just as it hits the ground? What's its velocity? We talked about this, remember? It's 120, 30, right? It sure should it's be. It's going to be the same exact as what started when you were doing the little... Yeah. Hey, you knew two out of the three right off the top, didn't you? Yes, you did. You told me. I have okay. to second guess myself and beat myself up and tell myself I'm not doing it right. Leave that for your sparring partner to beat you up. Okay, never mind. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So, what's that? Huh? I've already graded it, I'm afraid. So y'all can always ask. I'm not sure you messed it up badly. You came out with a pretty good grade if I'm not. Have you checked your grade? It's not posted in Blackboard yet? Okay. I couldn't uh, get to Blackboard at all this weekend, so I thought I had done it before I left, but maybe I didn't. Okay. I'll try to get that done. You, you did okay. Okay. So that's all you need from example two. Or problem 10, right? Okay. I'm going to erase this. Is that okay? Okay. And let's do which one's next. Is that the gasoline? Example 5. I believe so. A quantity of gasoline weighs 5.5 pounds with a weight density of 42.0 pounds per cubic feet. Find its volume. Quantity of gasoline weighs, so that's F sub W, is equal to 5.50 pounds. Okay. The weight density, that's D sub W, is equal to 42.0 pounds per cubic feet. Okay. And it's saying find its volume. How do, can we relate weight, density, and volume? Anyone know the formula? We've been using it, except for our brief interlude with problem 10, almost constantly. What's the formula between weight, density, and volume? been at least 15 minutes ago. Okay. Weight, density, and volume. Okay, density is equal to weight, F sub W, divided by volume. So how do we solve that for volume? You could use your little triangles or circle, or you could just multiply and divide. What would that give you? Say again. What do you say? Weight divided by density? Perfect. Volume is equal to weight, F sub W, divided by density, D sub W. And that would be 
5.50 pounds divided by 42.0 pounds per cubic feet. Okay? It's going to be a fairly small number. Something on the order of one-eighth, which would be like 0 0.12 or something close to that. What do you get? Say that again, 0 0.121? 131. Okay, 131. It's a good defense in basketball, by the way. Okay, 0 0.131. And your pounds cancel out. So you have 1 over 1 over f cubic feet. When you divide 1 by 1 over cubic feet, that's 1 times cubic feet. So that would be cubic feet, which is a good measure for volume, and that's what they get in the book, too. Good for them. Everybody see that? Okay. All right. Now, we don't have a lab in this course. If we did, one typical lab that we could do would be determine the density of a rock. I do this in my physical science class. I have chunks of rock, and it's real hard to determine the volume of that chunk of rock, right? Because it's very irregularly shaped. So how we typically do this is to fill a container absolutely, well, first thing you do is put the rock on a scale and determine its weight or its mass, depending on which one you're using. Okay? Then you fill a container absolutely full of water. And the container must be big enough so the whole rock can go in it with none come sticking out, okay? Fill it completely full of water and then have a container under that big enough to catch water and then very carefully lower the rock into the container of water and catch all the water coming out. Then you can take that water and determine its volume really simply. Pour it in a graduated cylinder. That's what they're talking about here. Okay, and what they've done here is a rock of mass 10.8 kilograms. So the mass of the rock is 10.8 kilograms. By the way, that's a pretty hefty rock. Uh, that would be better than 20 pounds, probably closer to 25 and maybe even more. Pretty good sized rock. Okay, displaces... 320, 3,200 cubic centimeters of water. So if it displaces that, that would be its volume. Equal 3,200, right? Cubic centimeters of water. Okay? What is the mass density of the rock? Okay, now what units do we usually use for mass density? Say again? Yeah, we use cubic meters. So let's first, okay, now you can do it either way you want to. It just seems like to me, well, let's, I think I know how the book's going to do it. Let's do it this way. The, the mass density, that's what we're looking for, is equal to what? Mass divided by volume. And we have the mass of 10.8 kilograms divided by the volume of 320. And by the way, in the book, they put a bar over the first zero, meaning that's a significant zero. The other one is not. Cubic centimeters. But then we've got to multiply blank, blank, and we want to come out with blank kilograms per cubic meters. Okay? So what goes in our the second blank, what goes above and below? Help me. Centimeters on top. Centimeters on top and meters on the bottom. And how many centimeters in a meter or meters in a centimeter? 
which one 100 centimeters makes one meter. But then we got to cube things. Cube that, cube that, cube that, and cube that. I can do the one, okay? This will be, we've done it before, a million. Six zeros. Okay? So, what we can do is 10.8 times a million, that would be 10 comma 8 zero 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 divide that by 3200 and what do you get three thousand three hundred seventy five okay and that would be kilograms per cubic meter now I know they're not going to like that so I'm going to round that to three thousand three hundred eighty kilograms per cubic meter oops cubic meter I put a centimeter there so let me erase that yeah too much erased Okay, now, they got 3,380 kilograms per cubic meter. Good for them. Now, that's a fairly dense rock. Now let's see what it compares to. Um, it's denser than concrete, but not as dense as iron. So it's somewhere, oh, uh, yeah not as dense as, yeah, so denser than aluminum even, but not as dense as iron, okay, all right, this is a similar type problem, but we're going to be going a different direction. A rock displaces three gallons of water. What is three gallons of water a measure of? Gallon is what kind of measure? Second? Yes. It's actually called capacity, but it's equivalent to volume. Okay? But we got to get that into, I believe it was cubic... Okay, let's see. Let me read the rest of the problem. Yeah, it must be U.S. customary. So we had that in terms of 231 cubic inches. Didn't we have that in the earlier problem? One gallon is 231 cubic inches. So multiply this by blank blank to give you blank cubic inches. And what blank will go where? Inches on, top. Inches on top and gallons on the bottom. And that would be 231. And that's actually cubic inches, one gallon. Okay? So you just multiply 231 times your three. Okay? I'll let you do that. Okay, that's the volume of the water and has a weight density of 156 pounds per cubic feet. So it's D sub W is 156 pounds per cubic feet. Okay. <clears throat> Do you see a little bit of a problem with this problem? Pounds are okay. Everything looks all right there. But your volume up top is in cubic inches, and on the bottom in the second thing is in cubic feet. So once you got the volume there, that's going to be a pretty large number, like 693, right? Isn't that what you got? 693 cubic inches. 
And what you need to do is multiply this with blank blank to get cubic feet. And what will be where on your uh, second blank? <coughs> Sorry. Feet on top and inches on the bottom. You're standing on your head. Okay, how many inches in a foot or feet in an inch? One foot, is 12 inches. One foot is 12 inches, but then you're going to have to cube everything. So that's 693 divided by 12, divided by 12, divided by 12. <coughs> Crisis. That will give you the volume in cubic feet. Anyone get it yet? Say again. Zero point. Four zero one cubic feet. Okay. Now we're looking for what is its weight, and what so the f sub w is its weight. If I could get it to write. Okay. That's the unknown here. How does that relate to density and volume? What's your basic formula? Basic. Yeah. That's be your density, weight. density, weight density is equal to F sub W divided by volume. We want to solve for F sub W, so what do we do? Yes, multiply the density by the volume. All right. So F sub W is equal to the density, 156 pounds per cubic feet, times the volume, which you got was 0 0.401 cubic feet. Hey, look at that. Cubic feet cancel out. That was heartwarming. And 0 0.401 times 156 is what? Fifty two point no, sixty two. Sixty two point fifty five. So round that to six. Sixty two point six pounds. Okay? That's the weight of the water. Sixty two point six. Good for them, they got it right. All right. Now don't know if you'll run into this much in what you'll be doing, but sometimes they don't really talk about the density of a material. They talk about its specific gravity. Now, the only difference, well, the difference between specific gravity and density is specific gravity is a dimensionless quantity. What you do, you take the density of the material and divide it by the density of water. Now, if you're in the SI system, the density of water is 1 gram per cubic centimeter or 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. So you're dividing by a really easy number. Specific gravity would just be, uh, if you had grams per cubic centimeter, exactly the number with no units, or divide by 1,000, and you would get it. It's a unitless quantity. But if you're doing the SI units, I mean the U.S. customary units, then you have to divide by this, 62.4 pounds per cubic feet. So the number will be very different, okay? But that's what we're dealing with now. So here's example 8. Oh, no. It's happened again. We've run out of time. I hate it that we didn't finish the chapter this time. But we'll, all we have left is that problem. Yeah, well, two, eight and nine. Okay. And then we'll be going to, does anyone remember the next? By the way. Okay. Uh, you can already got, start looking at some of the problems. Aren't the odds in the back? Okay. Any of the odds, 1 through 37, I uh, think you can do any of those. You don't have to do them all, but do some of them. 
uh, just so you get a really good feel for those. And then what chapter do we go to next? I'd have to check it on my... Thing. Huh? 16. 16. And chapter 16 is... Is getting into lectures. Oh, wave motions and sound. Sound, yes, that's going to be pretty important. Okay, so we'll finish this one. I'll try to have your test ready, knock on wood, uh, by next time for chapter 12, this is, and then we'll get started on chapter 16 next time. Good deal. Say that one more time. Uh, yes, I can. It was okay last time? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what I have to do, because the test bank gives it to me in some weird format, I have to take it to a secretary, have her scan it, and then she uh, sends the file to me. I can put the PDF file. But I wasn't sure all of you could read PDFs, but we can do that. All right. We will go on and count. Uh,